All this week I have come to the House floor for a very special purpose. I have offered only some of the reasons that the residents who live in the nation's capital should have the same basic rights as other Americans. All other Americans have achieved these rights through statehood. We have tried to break down the elements of statehood into separate bills, but we have not been able to get these elements recognized by the Congress of the United States either. So, Mr. Speaker, I am making use of an important day upcoming uh, next week when Congress will be out of session. April 16th uh, is commemorated in the District of Columbia because it is the day 251 years ago when Abraham Lincoln freed those slaves who happened to live in the nation's capital nine months before the National Emancipation Proclamation. I have used this upcoming occasion to offer a series of remarks, not only, of course, because of this historic occasion in our city, but because of the meaning this occasion has to the residents of the nation's capital here and now, right this moment, not 251 years ago. Unlike 1863, when African Americans who happened to live in the nation's capital were deprived of freedom, in 2014, every American citizen of every background, of every race, of every color, of every religion, of every ethnic origin, is equally deprived of equal rights with other Americans. Other Americans, to have their full rights, need only be taxpaying citizens who serve in the nation's wars. The people I represent have served in the nation's wars since the very first war, the war that created the United States of America was fought. And from the moment the Congress imposed federal income taxes on the people of the United States, the people I represent have paid those taxes to support their government. Without a voting member in this Congress, this House of Representatives, and with no voting members in the Senate of the United States, I do have the vote in committee, but when matters affecting my jurisdiction in particular or matters affecting the United States in which my jurisdiction is implicated, like whether to go to war in Iraq and Afghanistan where our residents have served, I have no vote on this floor. Mind you, on this floor, they vote on the budget raise, the local re budget raise in my city, not one penny of which has been contributed by, by this Congress. Yet nothing is more important to residents 
of our country than the ability to pass your own local laws, to raise your own local money, and say how it's to be spent without interference from the national government. No others who pay taxes, federal taxes, obviously we pay local taxes, but no others who pay federal taxes and who have served in our wars are denied their basic rights in our country. This, of course, is an embarrassment to the country itself. But today it is far more serious. It is a violation of international law and a treaty that we have signed. Last month, the UN Human Rights Committee uh, issued its report for 2014. Its report called our country to account on the denial of national voting rights in the national legislature for the residents of the District of Columbia. In other words, the United States government is in violation of the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights. That is a treaty that our country signed in 1992. The UN report recommended provide full voting rights for the residents of Washington, D.C. I would venture to say that you will not find an American citizen who, who does not agree that before the Congress it can impose any burden on you. You ought to have the right to raise your hand, yay or nay. Moreover, this is not the first time that the United Nations has called our country to account. Earlier, in 2006, the Human Rights Committee wrote, the committee, having taken note of the responses provided by the delegation, that means the United States delegation to the UN, heard their responses and said, remains concerned that the residents of the District of Columbia do not enjoy full representation in Congress. A restriction does not seem to be compatible with Article 25 of the Covenant. And then it cited Articles 2, 25, and 26. Article 2, and I won't quote from the entire article, says adopt such laws or other measures as may be necessary to give effect to the rights recognized in the present covenant. That covenant is a treaty a treaty we signed in 1992 to which we are by human rights and international law bound. Article 25 it says that that right includes the right to take part in the conduct of public affairs directly or through freely chosen representatives. In our country,